Hi guys, welcome back to Bite Size Excel. In this video, we're going to take an introductory look at pivot tables and some basics of how you might use these and how you input these into your workbook. Now, pivot tables are a handy tool if you've got large complex data sets and you want something that can quickly calculate and summarize your data in a way that makes it much easier for you to read and use. In this workbook, we have an example of emissions data for different regions within the UK. It's obviously got a lot of different columns. It's sorted by year, but the data is not in a particularly usable format. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a pivot table to summarize the data in a way that we might find useful. We'll start with inserting our pivot table. And to do that, what you need to do is come to this insert tab at the top and click on this first option, pivot table. And what you'll get is you'll get your create pivot table dialog box. And what it's done is automatically selected the table that it thinks we want to use. Now you can go in and select this yourself. What we're going to do here is we're just going to quickly check that it's selected the right data, which it has. You can also use an external data source, but I do find that for the most part, I'm trying to summarize something in my existing workbook. So I'll use this first option. You then need to choose where you want your pivot table to be placed. You can either pick a location in your existing workbook or you can click on new worksheet. So in this instance, we'll use this new worksheet option. And if we click OK, you'll see it puts a new sheet in here at the bottom with our pivot table on it. Now, once you've inserted your pivot table, you'll need to decide what fields you want to have displayed. So essentially, what it's done here on the side in this pivot table fields box, it selected a number of fields, which is simply a column header from your source data. So if you scroll back to the top here and look at our headers across here, that's what appears in this list here. Now, say for example, we want to display our data so that it has total emissions at the top and the years down the side. What we want to do is we can either check here, but if we want to make sure it appears as row, so if we check it here, it's probably going to go in as values. As you can see, it has done. So we want to drag it over to rows. You can also just drag it down from the list in the first instance. And what we want to do is have our grand total as our values. And you'll see that it summarized our data quite quickly by our year and the grand total. Now, pivot tables are very, very helpful because you can quickly change how your data is displayed. So say, for example, I want my year instead as a column. And I want to put my name in as our rows. You'll see that it was quite quick to change that round. I can also change it so that we've got our years and then our name as rows and columns. Now, there are loads of helpful things that pivot tables can do. For example, at the moment, I've got our data as the sum. What we can do, let's take the year out just to make it a little bit more readable and say I want the average instead per year. What you can do is you can click on this little drop down box, go to value field setting, and there's a whole range of options here as to how you want to summarize your data. So I want to select average and say I want to change the name and say average by year. If we click OK, it's now changed the average. The other thing we can do in this value field settings box is we can change how our number format appears. So by default, it will go in as general. Say we want to ensure that all these are displayed as numbers. Click number, the format you want and click OK. It will then summarize it in that manner. Now say I want to go back and just have it as the sum. If I go into value field settings, go back to sum and click OK, you'll see that it's totaled up. Now, a few things to know about pivot tables. When you're clicked into your pivot table, you'll see if I click in, these two new tabs at the top appear. So our analyze has a number of options for helping us analyze our data and the design how we can view our pivot table. So say, for example, I want banded rows. I can click on banded rows and I will put it in. Say I want a slightly different color scheme. 
if we go back to our analyze one, if for example, we've closed down our field list here by mistake, you can click on this button here to open it. So this one opens and closes. We can also change the name of our pivot table. And if we click this little drop down options here, you can change some of your layout and formatting options in here. So there's a number of other options with your pivot tables. So let's, for example, put our years back in for now. It's gone into the values, so we need to just move it up into our columns. So we've got our years in as columns. It's automatically put in a grand total for both our rows and our columns. Say we wanted to remove one of those. Say, for example, we don't want the grand total on this side. We click on our options up here on the left hand side. Go to totals and filters and you'll see there's a number of boxes here that can be checked and unchecked. So if we uncheck the grand total for rows and click OK, you'll notice that that column has disappeared. And if you want to pop it back in, we can just reinsert it. Now, one thing I've noticed here with how my data is sorted is I have I have a total here for England as well as all the individual regions. So essentially, my data has been double counted. So I want to get rid of this data in my source data set. And this will go for if you want to update any data. So if we find our England totals, say we want to either delete it or copy it out and save it somewhere else. So I'm just going to delete it for now because this is a copy of a bigger data set. And if we go back in, you'll see it still appears in your pivot table. To update that, we go back to our Analyze tab. And if we click Refresh, you'll notice that it disappears. So your pivot table won't update until you click this Refresh button if you change anything in your source data. You can also change your source data by clicking this button here. It will show you the table you've currently got selected. And if you want to select a new one, this is where you would go about doing it. Now there's loads of functionality within pivot tables. This has just been a brief introduction, but if there's anything specific that you'd like to ask or see in a later video, please do let me know in a comment. I do hope that you found this introduction useful. Please do like and subscribe. And I do hope I see you on a future video.